Koenant, good evening fellow South Africans and citizens of the world. Now, there's a very important message I have to get out to all my friends in South Africa. And that is that it is absolutely urgent and necessary that you prep for one particular product right now. And that is drinking water. And I'll I'll demonstrate to you adequately why in a second. But uh, look, what I used to do when I was concerned about prepping and things like that, if your tap water is good drinking water, buy yourself a bunch of uh, big barrels and just fill them up with that water, okay? And just have them somewhere safe in a, a, a back room or, or wherever, but just have that drinking water on tap. Let me tell you why. First thing, sewage going into the rivers in South Africa is completely out of control. The municipal municipalities have completely lost the plot when it comes to controlling sewage. And I'll just give you two examples. And this is happening all over the country. But the first example is in a place called Bonnie Doon and Nahoon. And that's at East London. Right on the beach. Very popular Christmas spot. Not so much this year, I feel. Beachgoers were outraged when Buffalo City Metro Pump House Station failed and the contents of sewers serving the suburbs of Vincent, Berea, Sterling, Bonnie Doon and Nahoon surged into the Ishlanza River mouth across Nahoon Beach and into the sea on Wednesday. Raw sewage. By the way, Buffalo City is East London, just so you know. The shout went up from walkers and swimmers at dawn that the turdy, as the tributary is known, was filthy, and by 8am the dispatch was on the scene. Already two BCM technical buckies were at the pump house and two DA councillors, Jason McDonald and Sue Bentley, were hovering around looking concerned. The contents of the overflow pipe from the station were gushing out of the bush into the river and a large olive grey pume, roughly the size of two tennis courts, spread upstream. A cormorant was seen drying its wings on a plastic drum in the midst of the scum. At the pump station, Bentley and McDowell said a BCM electrician was on the scene and had dealt with faulty batteries. The station was apparently back in action. Now, OK, we're talking about what appears to be an isolated incident, but it isn't. It's happening all over the country because municipalities are out of cash. They're not maintaining their sewage systems. And as a clear example of this, we look no further than the Vaal River. And, by the way, I've got to thank uh, Jurgens and Charles who've uh, sent me this information. Sewage pouring into the Vaal River system is having a major ecological impact and creating a health risk and resulting in dangerously high E. coli levels. Environmental organisation Save the Vaal Environment was commenting on an announcement made by the Human Settlements Water and Sanitation Department on Wednesday that it had sourced expertise from the Urkelini Wastewater Department Works, or Irwat, to address the blocked pipes and broken pumps at the Se Sebokeng Wastewater Treatment Works. Now, let's remember that the genius ANC government weren't able to pay the South African National Defence Force 1.1 billion rand to sort this mess out. They couldn't find 1.1 billion rand. And yet they can throw billions around at everything else. This is more important than electricity. This is more important than ESCOM. And I'll tell you why. Even if the lights go out, you can survive if you've got adequate supplies of drinking water. But of course, when the lights do go out, the pumps can't pump water up into those water tanks. So that even that water is going to run out. But... If your water is contaminated to the level where you, they can't produce drinking water, imagine what that's going to do. It only takes a few days to die of uh, thirst. You've got millions and millions of people living in the Gauteng area. 
probably over 20 million people, huge numbers of people who will be impacted by a complete um, closure of drinking water. It, 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 it would be devastating. Disease would ransack the whole place. This is absolutely huge, and it's not been talked about by the mainstream media in South Africa. Let me just continue with what, what is said here. The Sebakang treatment works previously received 100 megalitres of wastewater a day, but currently only gets 20 megalitres. This means that the plant is not fully operational, and the remaining 80 megalitres of sewage is flowing into the streets, the felt, and the Fowl River. The department said on Wednesday, Irvot had advertised two tenders, which will mainly focus on refurbishing the aging waster treatment works to prevent the ongoing sewage spills into the Val. Now, why I have my doubts about this is because this has been going on for months, and they've been talking about it for months, and nothing has been done. This is where the L factor, once again, has completely gone missing in action. Save the Val Environment spokesperson Maureen Stewart said on Friday, that sewage pollution was affecting a number of areas, including Frieniken and Everton. She said, in addition, the Rietspreit, a tributary of the Vaal, is receiving most of the raw sewage, which should have been treated at the Sebakeng plant, and the Rietspreit treatment plant is not operating properly, with its effluent not meeting required standards, thus adding to the sewage pollution. Stewart said the end result was an E. coli count running into millions of parts per hundred milliliter of water at the mouth of the reed spate, where it enters the vial. An E. coli count of 400 parts per hundred milliliter of water is considered a health risk. You get that? Millions of parts per hundred milliliter of water, where just 400 parts per hundred milliliters of water is considered a health risk. This is a complete and utter disaster. Look, if any of my subscribers live in that area, I would love you to go to um, the mouth of the reed sprite where it enters the vial and get some video footage for me that, that we can put up here so people know exactly what's happening. Stewart said pollution of the Val River from the Infil any local council wastewater treatment had been going on for 15 years. She said it's become a crisis. In late 2007, when the Emfilweni waste treatment system, comprising 2,000 kilometers of pipes, 44 pump stations, and three wastewater treatment plants, collapsed. She said this resulted in a massive pollution of the Val River, which is ongoing. It is a pity that the department did not react earlier to prevent this crisis, despite considerable pressure from Save the Val. Stewart said the finance minister, Tito Mbatweni, had announced in October last year when the Defence Force was deployed to help in cleaning the Vaal River system that about 800 million rand would be available to stop the pollution of the Vaal River. She said it was too difficult to know how much had been committed to the project. I guess most of it has just kind of been sucked away by people on the side. Corruption in action. In April, former Minister Gugili Nkwitini said 371 million rand had been allocated for the project. On Wednesday, the department said the figure was 176 million rand. So no one knows how much money has been allocated, but it certainly hasn't been sufficient. Stewart said, so many rand figures are bandied around that it's difficult to know what is factual. It was Save's understanding that 341 million rand was to be made available in the 2019-2020 financial year. The department's press statement now talks about 176 million rand to comply, to completely tackle the pollution problem, Stewart said. How are they going to completely tackle the pollution's problem when it's less than a quarter of what was required? She said the department's latest intervention did not mention completion dates for the repairs. So it does not give us any hope for an early resolution of the pollution crisis in the Vile River. Why are we talking now, about this? Well, I'll tell you why. Because... At the start, I talked about prepping with fresh drinking water and just making sure you've got loads of it. And uh, now I'll tell you why. Rand Water is implementing Stage 2 water supply restrictions. 
The city of Johannesburg said this was due to increased usage in the current heat wave, with Rand Water concerned that this is unsustainable. Now, why is this unsustainable? Probably because the ability to provide clean water as a result of all the sewerage, on all the rivers and dams, is becoming harder and harder. You know, you can't keep on pulling the genie out the bottle when you've got crap water. It just doesn't work. And I, I think there's something going on behind the scenes here. Um, but having said that, Johannesburg confirmed the usage had risen to an alarming rate. Johannesburg water has become throttling reserves by between 20% to 40% in line with the restrictions imposed by Rand Water. So while you've got a heat wave coming to Johannesburg, they're now turning off the water taps. This is the very time that you need good, clean water for drinking. Another heat wave is expected this weekend, and the city has appealed to customers to use water sparingly. Rand Water has called a briefing for Friday, at which it will share how it intends to address the current water demand issues and their immediate impact on consumers. The city said earlier this week that the Val Dam's levels had fallen below 50% for the first time in nearly three years, Around the same time last year, the dam was more than 86% full. Okay, now, remember, this is the same Val Dam that's full of shit that's coming down these rivers. It is, it is so polluted now, it is extraordinary. And it, it gets worse because um, when we talk about the heat wave, the South African Weather Service, or SARS, has warned that a heat wave is expected to hit Gauteng this weekend. Forecaster Kumfa Mazizani said temperatures will range between 34 degrees and 36 and possibly even rising to 38 degrees Celsius. Scorching temperatures are also expected over the eastern parts of the northwest and the Free State from Thursday. From Friday, the heat wave will hit Mpumalanga and Limpopo. These conditions are quite common, especially this time of the year, because it's very dry, hot and windy. Now, if they're quite common at this time of the year, the question is, why is Val Water having to put in stage two with its water? Why is it having to limit supply? That's a question that should be asked. And there's a very simple reason. That's because the ability to provide good, clean drinking water is getting harder and harder. And it's not just the drought. It's the sewerage in the dams and rivers. That's the reality. You know, that, that's, that is the sad reality of what's happening in South Africa. All right, guys, please remember to subscribe to be kept informed. Ring the bell for the updates. Please like this video. Please share this video. And above all, stay safe.